I'm talking here at the uh, People-Centered Internet co uh, Conference at uh, Stanford, and I'm, I'm talking to uh, Stephen Nashuk. He lived in Asia, in Indonesia, where we as Dutch people are really interested, and in, uh, in Vietnam. And he came out with some observations what it takes to share medical data and to improve improve healthcare. And you had some very interesting things to say. The first, the Rockefeller Foundation. I mean, we don't know that in Europe so much. What what does it? What do they do? Uh, the Rockefeller Foundation has probably the broadest mission of any uh, organization I've ever worked with. It's to improve the condition of mankind. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> so what was your role when you went in Asia and, 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 and worked on that healthcare? Uh, uh, my role was basically to promote uh, improved, um, this is still broad, health mm -hmm. system functioning in a selected number of countries in Southeast and South Asia. Yeah. So you worked there for you worked there for ten years. What if you if you come now back at this? Uh, you shared some of the lessons here. Wh what would you share? What is important for us to take into account to make the whole mm -hmm. people-centered network a reality? The people-centered network, right? Uh, well, a couple of things. I would say one, just having sort of been embedded in different societies, um, technology is not a discrete element of a society. Technology is embedded in institutions. It's embedded in culture. And it's certainly controlled by politics in many cases. Mm -hmm. So what we were talking about in the room a few minutes ago was the notion that where technology seems to have worked better, and um, we had a few examples. Uh, Singapore, Estonia. Or Estonia, Rwanda, interestingly, mm -hmm. was often where there's a sense of, of both shared societal purpose. There's a shared narrative around what we want the technology to do. What, what are we trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. Often technology in isolation of sharing cool ideas it has some limitations. And then number two is, is there actually a means that is that incentivizes and empowers people to use that technology in productive ways? Mm -hmm. And in many societies, there is not. Yeah. So in Asia, those conditions are not met yet. I mean, technology is more used in silos, and nothing is used for on, a, on, a, on a society level. It's partially met. You know, like anywhere. You know, I think the example we gave, a, a kind of an interesting political example of where technology is used in concert with politics, is in Singapore, where we're still debating whether it's completely true yet. But it's the aspiration of the state to have every government minister who works on contract to actually be partially graded and evaluated every year based on the achievements of other ministers. So they're trying to actually de-silo it through an incentive system yeah. and a large bonus system. Yeah. And if you look at Vietnam or if you look at Indonesia or Thailand, mm -hmm. I mean, those kinds of systems are far, far removed. Everybody is much more into silos, uh, mm -hmm. trying to optimize their own family, their own uh, tribe and their own uh, organization. Um, I don't know. From the government perspective, they're hugely different. The Thai system is a highly centralized and quite coherent system. Um, one thing that you have actually that's advantageous in all three of those countries that you don't have elsewhere, everywhere in the world, is that actually there's a shared language. Mm -hmm. That's a small thing, but it's a significant thing. Um, the Thai system is very centralized and drives towards a fairly set of coherent aims. The Indonesian system is like Indonesian society. It's uh, highly fragmented very relaxed, a lot of fun, mm -hmm. um, but they are not actually... The Dutch spent 400 <laughs> years <laughs> there, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> I know, and we still have, there's still some good, there's still some, there's still some uh, nice houses from the Dutch, yeah. and some words, apotheque is still pharmacy, yeah. so we have that. Um, but, uh, you know, but uh, what I'm saying is that technology in itself is uh, a tool to a larger sort of shared aim or narrative, um, where you have the shared aim or narrative, say, within the Thai health system, you see technology being leveraged in ways that are highly sophisticated. Mm -hmm. The National Health Security Office in Bangkok has something that looks like it's out of a science fiction movie. When you look at they have real-time really? data. Yeah. Every patient admission in the country is up on the clock. Really? Yeah, by minute. Yeah. They have a huge, big uh, dashboard where they can see how healthcare is functioning exactly. at, at a second. Right, at a second. Wow. Now, the Vietnamese, even though it's a one-party state, has unbelievably fragmented system. It's essentially run not only by every province, but in many cases at the sub-district level. Yeah. So, so there's actually, there's a, there, Vietnam has fairly good outcomes, but an extraordinarily fragmented system. And so the possibilities for the Internet of Technology to um, defragment that system are high. But the point is, is that that would be a necessary but not sufficient condition. You would also need uh, a wider shared 
narrative around what you want the system to do differently. So while we dream up all kinds of scenarios here, we need to take into account that countries are unbelievable different and the technology has an unbelievable different chance to be successful. Yeah, technology is embedded in, in societies and institutions and there's an interplay. Technology changes societies, right? Everybody I know in Indonesia is on Facebook. I mean, it's really changed their sense of the world. At the same time, they use Facebook very differently in ways people in Silicon Valley probably use Facebook. Okay. Thanks for sharing. Thank you.